ends today, and uh, also the Labor Day weekend, uh, the building is closed. I was taking my wife and my son to Cumberland yesterday. I even stopped the building. I tried to do something. I see the autoclave, all those things are not, work not working. So I said I just cancel the lab. And on Thursday, we will combine Tuesday and Thursday lab to spread the plating, core plating. The principal will talk real quick. And we're also going to go over the results of you did the last Thursday about transferring bacteria. Okay. But today is the time, which is we have a lab off. What you should do is I wrote in the email already. You guys should work with your bench partner, or you can do yourself. Is all these practice questions. This is lots of you ask how we're going to prepare the exam. This is an old exam question. I did this about like seven, seven, five years ago. This is gave you a sample and also gave you a practice. How, and we will talk almost everything on Thursday. But when, when I'm talking on Thursday, you need to have some reaction. Okay, uh, when I'm talking, I will say, any questions among that, that you're gonna ask me a question. You, I, you're not gonna, I'm not gonna say, Okay, question number two, the answer is B. Question number three is C. Or question number four is D. We will talk about that. We also will talk about why it's not A, B, C, okay? But then you prepare it, which means you tested yourself already, and then you have the question coming for the review section. And we review some of the slides, and we also review those questions, if there is something difficult. difficult. I'm going to show you an example how we should use these questions. Okay, all cellular organisms placed into one of three, okay, domains, which including archaea, bacteria, and eukaryotes. If you don't know the answer, what you should do? Go back to look at your slides. Okay, so let's say we go back right here. Go back to look at your slides. That will be all the way to lecture one. Okay, so we open the slides. You say you don't know. That's okay. That's why we give you. You go back. To look at the slides is right here. <coughs> this is where you find your answer. And you review the whole slides. And then, when I roll on the blackboard, if I mention something there, then you take some notes. That's a time to use the question to review the whole slides. Okay? Then, some of the questions, let's say we are talking about, go, go down, go down, we talk about. Gram stand, briefly explain the function of all the steps. When you review this question, you look at the slides. Then you will find there are some questions here which is also testing Gram stand. Let's say question 17. Okay, maybe question 18. And then we also talk about the cell wall structure. Let's say the big question 34. Those, you're going to all study them together. So in your mind, you have a knowledge system, not like each individual question. Okay, that gives you a chance to connect with all these knowledge. And uh, you can see it's difficult. If I say, okay, go ahead to do the exam right now, how many of you can get a little more than 90%? Is that right? That's not very easy. So this today is gave you time, and tomorrow to study by yourself, go over these questions, and we're gonna talk about these on Thursday. And our real exam question will be very similar to this, and at least the level is similar. Similarity of the difficult level, okay? But this is, will be your major study guide. So some of the question could be, right now is a short answer, I may become a true or false question. I may become a multiple choice question. But that's all the material we should, uh, we should know, okay? So that's why I give you this, this uh, to practice. Okay, so this is something, and also I have all these video right here, one by one. This is a classroom video, you can go back to look if you miss something, and these are the Zoom recording. Okay, I don't like to use this Zoom too much, because uh, I like to write and talk, so this is, but this is for last year, so you still can use some if you miss it. Okay, and the examination time I want to mention is next week, Tuesday, right here. And I also want to send an email to everybody. Even if some of you request accommodation, 
we will use a lab room as accommodation and the lab room back room if you want a privacy or something, okay? Uh, we are going to do the same time. And uh, unless you have a medical excuse, we don't do a separate time. Otherwise, we had 140 students. If you do individually, then we don't need to do anything else. Okay, so we got to do it all together. Uh, most of you going to do here, same at the lecture time. Some of you request a privacy or accommodation, whatever it's called. We will do separate in the lab or the room back at the lab. Okay, or Amy will find a room for you. Okay, so these are the things to talk about in Japan, and we will um, talk more on Thursday. Today we will finish about the slides, but these materials are very important. We will practice in next Thursday, this Thursday and also Tuesday's lab, but these basic information I want to be made clear here. We are talking about the last 20 slides of this lecture is we are talking about is cultivation. <coughs> I want to say identification. I want to say cultivation and numeration of material. So what is the major thing for this behind is bacteria media. Because we need a, a bacteria a vendor to carry on, to transport, to storage a bacteria. So that's why that's called a bacterial media. So basically is to carry on, transport, and for storage. Okay, so that's why the bacterial media. Now what are the bacterial media? We already learned in the lab. You already know some. We talk about the broth. We talk about the slant. We talk about the argon. These you already know, more or less you know some. But today we're going to talk about these in a more systemic way, which is more in a, in a system. Okay? So, first of all, how we got a classification of bacteria? Based on the physical classification, we could classify bacteria media into liquid and a solid. These are the two we know. Liquid media is gross. Solid media is argon. Okay, you are slant is the same as argon. And I want to mention in this lab, in this class, we will using semi semi solid medium once. Only once for testing motility. This is containing 5% argon, which is semi-solid. Why? Because we got a stab inoculation bacteria in the semi-solid media. We will see how they move. If they do not move, it's going to stay in the middle. If they have a little bit of tumbling, they might be like this. If the whole is covered with bacteria. That means it has a strong motility. Once the bacteria has a strong motility, which means they have a lots of flagella, possibly a petrochemical. Okay? That's I only going to temporarily mention here. Today we're going to focus on talk about liquid and solid argon. Most of them we're going to focus on talk about solid argon. So this is the first of all, is a physical nature. Second is chemical, a chemical nature. From the chemical nature, we can differentiate the bacteria. Number one, a bacterial medium defined all we say synthetic medium. And in the second category, we call it complex <coughs> This 
is the concept a little bit tricky. First of all, what means defined and a synthetic media? The definition you, when you look at textbook is very easy. All chemical ingredients of a bacterial medium is well defined. Okay, what is complex media? Other than that, requires a complex media. Looks like it's very easy. Now I'm gonna give you an example. A very simple example. Chop dip soil frost. Okay. What are the ingredients? Pepton, trapton, salt. Okay, let's say this is might be five percent. This might be ten percent. This might be two percent. Okay, we have beef extract. Let's say this might be five percent. Okay, then we have glucose. Maybe one percent. Let's. If I tell you traffic soil gross composed by 5% pepton, 10% trapton, 2% salt, 5% beef extract, 1% glucose, can you tell me is this a defined media or complex media? How many of you think this is a defined media? Okay, have, oh, most of them have hands on, is that right? How many of you think it's a complex media? Almost like half and half. Why do you think it's a defined medium? Because you think all the chemicals are defined, is that right? The other people say no, they are not defined. And I tell you, this is a sometimes it's a is an exam question. It's going to make you a little bit confused. When I say all chemical ingredients is well defined, which means you're going to see all these things you don't like. You don't like these, is that right? These like organic chemistry or inorganic chemistry. These are well clearly stated. Okay, so what that means all chemical ingredients is well defined. Which means the percentage the amount of all the chemicals has been spelled out and has been well defined, clearly described for the concentration. For pepton, trapton, beef extract, these things, it just gave you a common name. And inside, you don't know what are the exact chemical in it. So, it's like a combination. That's why if you see a bacterial medium like this, it is a complex medium. And I tell you, majority of the medium we use in the lab is a complex medium. So, this is slides tells you what's the difference between them. Define the synthetic media is look like the top slides. Can you see it? Potassium phosphates, magnesium sulfide, calcium chloride, ferric ammonium, EDTA. These are well defined amounts. Okay, we see glucose all here is well defined. This is a BG11 for cyanobacteria, which is used, the bacteria use photo as an energy resource. And this is a media which is <coughs> called N9 media for E. coli. These are very basic chemical composed media. That's called the N media. We don't use this in the lab too much. I'm honest to tell you, the only time in my life experiences so far, we did in the lab is we are cultivation biofilm. The reason is biofilm, we first cultivation them in a synthetic media because they'll give the minimum 
nutrition requirements to let them grow and then transfer them into different kind of surfaces. Then we do a validation study for the sanitizer. Okay? So this is the one. I will say usually is supply a very minimum nutrients for bacteria grow and use for biology pre cultivation. And in the lab, let's say we prepare a bacterial strain for AEM3 lab, we're not going to use a synthetic media to grow. And because the amount will be lower. Some of the bacteria, like E. coli, is a very common one. It's easy to grow. If you use a synthetic media to grow um, a streptococcus or might be micrococcus, all those type of little bit of fastidious bacteria are not going to grow very well sometimes. These are the media we are using in the lab all the time. When you see the broth, is neutral broth. That is pepton, gelatin, hydrolates coming from gelatin, so we don't know what's exactly chemical there. And the beef extracts. This is the same thing you can understand is a beef stew. You cooked it like a beef soup. It's the release all the nutrients into the liquid solution. So that's a neutral broth. It's a very huge amount of the nutrients there for bacteria. Traptic soil broth, we use lots of in the lab, lots of time in the lab, composed by trapton. This is the casing, digestive ca casing. Where the casing comes from? Come from milk, is that right? It's a major milk protein. Pepton, sorbing digestion, the digestive products from the sorbing. Trapton, pepton, we don't know the exact chemical there. Glucose, sodium chloride, and diphosphorus. So, these are the major components for tropic soil growth. For Makanti agar, these are the major ingredients, and we will talk about these later on when we talk about selective media for the Makanti agar. Okay, so, here yeah, which just tells you. The chemical nature, we can define bacteria media into synthetic media and a complex media. The key is whether these chemical ingredients are exactly clearly spelled out their chemical components and uh, their concentration. Okay, so these are the things that we want to talk. Here a slide which is gave you some uh, description of the media components like pepton, protein hydrolates prepared by partial digestion of protein sources, extract. Agar, we already mentioned it's a sulfate the polysaccharide. And the bacteria can use it to use a nu nutrient set, but cannot eat it, which means you're not going to broke it. So I always say the agar, the bacteria will not broke it. You, once you see the broken, we, which is we broke it. Okay. Now here we're going to talk about the different type of the media, which is from the function type. Uh, lots of things we will talk, and uh, some of them. A little bit tricky, but I want to explain this to you one by one. Okay, here we want to talk is the function type of the media. When they reach stationary phase, about 10 to the 8th to 10 to the 9th cells per ml. Which means 
This is universal, can grow most of the bacteria. For example, a tropic soil broth, TSB, a neutral broth, MB, let's say can grow E. coli at 35 degrees Celsius, 24 to 10 to the 8, 10 to the 9 cells per m. However, you need to know, since this is universal growth, so if you have any contaminants happen there, you will not recognize. So let's say I want to grow E. coli in a tropic soil broth or neutral broth. Unfortunately, I put salmonella there. After 24 hours, you will not see any difference. Looks very similar. Okay, that's a disadvantage for that. Second, when I say common bacteria, that means in the exception of fastidious bacteria. What is fastidious, first of all? Very picky. For example, Hemophilus influenza. Hemophilus influenza. That's a good example. Neisseria gonorrhea. Those are fastidious bacteria. We will mention how we got cultivation bacteria real quick. In the exception of fastidious bacteria. You put Hemophilus influenza onto tropic soil broth, it will not grow because they're very picky. This is the first one. Second one we want to mention is selective media. Selective media is a bacteria medium have certain ingredients favor only one type or one group of bacteria grow. Others will be, I would say, inhibited. And I give you a very easy example. If TSA agar, tropic soil agar, we are adding 100 ppm penicillin, then this is a typical selective media. Why? Only penicillin resistant bacteria Grow. Others will be inhibited. Now then they have the question, why we need this type of selective media? Because in the research, we want to do something for target the bacteria. We don't want uh, the background bacteria or the other bacteria to bother our work. So I give you an example. I had a chicken meat, let's say. Let's say a chicken uh, legs, for example. So I ground it, okay? I wanted to do something regarding for salmon health. In the lab. Because you know the chicken legs, when you get it from commercial the store or from some private sectors, they maybe naturally have some salmonella. Maybe a very small amount, but they more or less have some. Maybe they have some. Because salmonella is not zero tolerance on chicken meat. So what we should do? Then how do you know you're inoculated is the salmonella you want? How we do it? In the lab, we made it NAL 200 ppm that is called
log natalinic gasid resistant. Therefore, our salmonella is only going to be resistant to 200 ppm natalinic acids. And this 200 ppm natalinic acid will kill all the background salmonella. So therefore, we know this is a marker, like a marker. That is our target. And the others will be eliminated. But I'm also going to tell you, even in a lab situation, these type of selective marker, I will say 90% of the time it works. Sometimes it still fails. So you're in a other place. You have penicillin, you have TSA. Then you inoculate penicillin resistant E. coli there. Then you find still some other bacteria can grow. Why? Because some bacteria could be natural resistant to penicillin. Another thing is that there is only 5% of the bacteria we know. The 95% of the bacteria we don't know especially from the intestinal area. So that could be failed in the lab settings. But this is, a, at least is a good idea to do some of the marker bacteria, to use bacteria, the target bacteria we need for the research. So that's why it's a typical selective media. Now in our textbook, it's also mentioned Macanti agar, And the medical salt other is a selective medium. And we will talk about this individually in detail and also practice in the lab. I will mention Matanki other real quick. Medical salt other we will be mentioned in the lab. I think I may have a practice question that will let you practice. But we will do this in the lab. Okay? So this is second one is a selective medium. The third one, what I want to mention, is called enriched media and differentiated media. Okay, so third category is called enriched media. What is enriched media? Enriched media, which means Certain ingredients 